and I'm here. Can you hear me? Yeah. All right. There's there's Winnie. Okay. With dog. <laughs> You're dog. You are ready. Oh, uh, well, yeah. I'm, I'm as ready as it's going to be. Let's put it that way. So. Okay. It's it's okay. So you can start your presentation right now. Okay. So can we see that? Is that? Yep. Can we see something at least here? I don't know. Yes. Okay. It's a beautiful pink. Beautiful pink. You can't beat pink. It's my favorite color. Okay, so nobody's perfect, especially me tonight. Um, seems we have a little bit, bit of a problem with full screen preview for some reason, but no worries. We'll just flip through this. Um, and that's not going. I'm going to kill my computer tonight. There we go. Nobody's perfect. And my really bad Spanish as well. Okay, so this guy, um, 13 years old, okay, we all have to start somewhere, right? And what does he do? He does these very traditional paintings and um, very academic, very simple, but you can see there's obvious talent at 13 years old. Who is this character? Well, obviously, it is the man himself, Picasso. And uh, keep note of the little striped shirts, very, very important. Um, but he went through a huge transition and he always experimented to creating gigantic works such as this, Wernicke, and other amazing paintings such as this as well. So there's a start and there's a beginning and there's an end. But in the beginning, it's a bit of a rough time, I think. This guy, um, just on the tail end of Picasso, um, was a very uh, well-known uh, artist eventually, but he started doing stuff like this. My God, look at that. During the 1950s, he became uh, very famous for drawing shoes of all things. Beautiful shoes. Look at these shoes, blue shoes. Lovely shoes, but very different in terms of, uh, at the time in, in advertising in New York is all photography. So illustrating shoes is very different. Then he started to make his own art and his art failed to sell. His first two shows didn't sell. It was a disaster, terrible stuff. Um, and there he is again, a little older, uh, dragging his little portfolio around New York City. And who is he? Yes, he's Andy Warhol, striped shirt, check it out. Um, the thing is, he stopped and said, I have to reinvent myself. And I think we all have to reinvent ourselves sometimes. So he did, and look at him. Got a wig, got leather jackets, got striped shirts, um, became downtown at Greenwich Village, New York, Velvet Underground, created all this amazing, iconic art, which is now being recognized as, yeah, he's, he's genuine, he's good. So, but he had to go through a beginning and a middle and an end, but he wasn't perfect at the beginning. Another illustrator at the time, probably 19, uh, early 60s, was doing stuff like this. Very uh, simple book covers, okay? Nothing amazing, but nice. There's some right there. Um, and there he is on the right with his lovely wife, Shirley. Shirley was an illustrator and designer as well, very talented. But we all know him as Milton Glaser. There he is, the man himself doing I Love New York, okay? But he had to go through all of that to create work such as this, or even more recent work as this for Mad Men. Um, I love this. Um, I talked to Mirko Illich about this illustration he did, and apparently Milton did this in about 15 minutes. Just took a pencil out and drew it. Quite amazing piece of art. I love that. And that's one of his latest pieces, uh, talking about Donald Trump and his little space um, between his ears as well as his little projects. Silly, silly, silly. So ugly ducklings, patitos finos. I will use this with my students next time I see them but there's always a start, okay? So, Ugly Ducklings. This, believe it or not, is the first electric guitar in 1937. Pretty ugly. In fact, they called it the frying pan. It looks like a frying pan. And then later on, another gentleman came along and in the middle bit there, uh, created like the same kind of concept but made it more of a guitar, okay? This is Les Paul. Les Paul holding a Les Paul. Most amazing guitar. This is, a rocket ship. This is 1952, okay? Amazing design. Look at this thing. And what's great about it is that uh, 
it's, it's today, it's still being used. Led Zeppelin used this beautiful guitar, Slash, uh, Green Day, okay? But it's an amazing guitar that's lasted the test of time. So that was 1952, that's almost 70 years old, right? That's incredible. All right, so Ugly Ducklings. Here's a good Ugly Duckling. She started out singing in churches and doing lots of country music, all sorts of things like this. Yes, and she started doing country music and she did more country, but then she decided to reinvent herself. But what did she do? She got a striped shirt, just like Picasso and just like Warhol. And this is Taylor Swift, as we all know. But she not just cleaned up her work and her approach to music and, and what have you, it's a sophisticated uh, method of creating music and writing, but she's genuine. I, I, I very much admire what she does in terms of a musician, as a writer, it's fantastic. And guess what? She plays a Les Paul as well. Amazing, love that. Okay, so Ugly Ducklings. Look at your phone. Look at the phone in front of you right now. Here's your, there's your phone. Is it, look at this little sliver, this little tiny thing. Well, this is where it all started. Look at that. What a wooden box called Apple. And these things were ugly at the beginning. This is the mouse. Look at that thing. I remember that mouse. It's just like a little brick. That's the first Mac laptop. Look at your iMac or your laptop. Your, it's amazing the difference now to a dent, but there it is. And that's big technology. I like these um, first iMacs. I think they were kind of cool. All the different colors, good design. And then that's the updated clam. Thought that was interesting. They went for a lot of plastic. Then things went flat. I like this one. It's kind of uh, Star Trek-y. Um, and again, the screens got flat. Uh, oh, if you guys ever remember this thing, terrible. And then all this plastic, it went through ugly stages. And then they did this G5. And then things started to say, hmm, this is kind of nice. I like this. Kind of nice design. Oh, yeah, by the way, they did some cameras as well. They did these things called Newtons, this message pad. So camera, message pad, and da da da. But when they, went, when they did this investigating and experimenting, they came up with the iPod, there's all the different styles of the iPod, okay? Combined the camera iPod and that Newton thing into, yeah, the iPhone. And that's been revolutionary, but it had to go through those ugly steps to get to where we are with iPads and these things. These are next, these foldable, bizarre drawing pads. Quite exciting, really fun. Okay, so I think you always have to get off your lazy fat pass, all right? All of us are artists and designers. I think all of us are inherently lazy. Um, I am definitely lazy, but I'm forced myself to always upgrade and rethink, okay? So this is a poster that kind of launched all my design work and all my uh, international, whatever you want to call it, presence or whatever. And, you know, that was done ages ago. Um, recently, you know, revamp this, but you can see my style and my attitude, my colors, everything is freshened up, it's changed because I'm experimenting and trying to do some new things, okay? So um, not everything I do works. So guess what? I'm gonna show you some stuff that I think is shit and how I try to improve it. This was for a poster exhibition, um, Posters Without Borders, and um, for, uh, peace and action reaction, okay? So I thought this idea that the peace fly swatter was kind of funny, but didn't have enough energy to it. So I, I was playing around with ideas, stuck my hand in a big bucket of black paint, played around with ideas, concepts, very tactile, okay? Then I came up with this, this idea of resist. It's more of an action, okay? There's more theatrics with this than that fly swatter, okay? Then I sent this to Caracas for my friends there, all right, because they were having some terrible difficulties. So they used that poster in the streets there. Um, poster on peace. I don't know. I'm fucking around here. And I was playing around with these ideas and came up with this. And it was just, it's just like, what, what does it really mean? It doesn't really mean anything. So then I did this one. So uh, war and peace, the idea that peace actually weighs heavier than war, though it's a lighter entity. All right, and I think it was being put up somewhere in uh, Moscow or somewhere like that, or Iran, I don't know. Anyway, it was kind of fun. 
this is really important. You see all my crappy work because we all have it, right? Because nobody's perfect. Um, this was an invitation design poster for reunification of North and South Korea. So the idea that you have to trust each other. So the trapeze, the idea that you have to trust the other person. All right. So I looked at this and went, oh my God, like I don't normally do this. This is a sketchy kind of thing. And so North and South Korea is two different distinct colors that we have red and blue. And I hated to type on this and I didn't like the vector look. So I drew it by hand and tried to do something like that, but it looked kind of French for some reason and it wasn't working. So I went back and you always have to go back to your research or start more research. And there's North Korea, there's South Korea. Oh, okay. So we have red at the top, we have blue at the bottom. And I wanted the idea that they're unifying together. And how do you do that? Well, you kind of melting together, melting. So I did these popsicles, you know, the red and the blue, uh, beyond peace, reunification, all right? So that was kind of a better graphic, more interesting solution than the crap I was doing before, okay? Uh, GQ magazine in Mexico City asked me to do uh, an illustration poster for them. And of course, naturally, I kind of, this is one of the drawings I did for a beer label. Naturally, I go for this kind of, El Santo and the Corazones, the hearts. I love these little mirrors. And I thought, well, maybe I can combine some of those together, you know, Santo with the things, da, da, da. And I thought, you know, this is GQ magazine. It has nothing to do with fashion and being cool and men's fashion and, and women and sexy stuff. This is, no, 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 this is, this is not right. So I started to do some research on Mexico. Love Mexico. Um, I don't know if you can see this, but, I always thought the little bit in here looked like a duck head, like a little duck. I don't know, that's just me. Anyway, so I looked at all this stuff from the uh, 68 Olympics and the fashion. I saw the show in uh, Mexico City, which was amazing. Uh, just incredible stuff. And they did an amazing job. Look at all those colors. Typical Mexico, love Mexico. Yes, look at all these colors. So I did this and I went back to the sketches, thought about fashion. In another sketch, another test sketch. This is the magazine, oddly it went into with Taylor Swift. And there's the illustration poster for that. But you can see the influence and the steps I went through, which I think is a better solution than the first thing with El Santo. Okay, learning to think. Um, it's very important to think. My students at the university, everything they do and everything they touch has to be in pencil before they get on the computer. And, and they say, oh yeah, but that's old school. And I said, no, no, it's not. If you're gonna build a building, an architect has blueprints, right? You have to have drawings before you start to put down a foundation and start building the bricks. So they all have to work out these ideas in pencil. And it's good because it makes them think, think things through A to Z. So this was Save the Bees, okay? And this is one of my students and she was working on this idea of saving the bees and working on brochures and posters. And her thing was bees and the fashion industry, there's a problem because of how bees work and uh, cotton and da 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 da. So that was her thing. And she had little bees drawing and with clothing. And she sent me this one night and said, what do you think of this? I said, oh, let's have a look at it. And you know, you got a bee, you got a leather jacket, you got some flowers. It's, it's too many elements and it's not, not clean enough. It's not clear enough. I don't see what this is. So I said, go back, strip it down and rethink, which she did. And she came back with this, to be or not to be, which is kind of corny, but the idea of the little clothes peg is to do with the fashion bit. And there's other type that goes along with that. And then other images such as that, but it's far more brighter, fresher, and more modern than what she was doing before. And this is a class situation. Just wanted to show you. We all work with our hands. I think it's very important. What I think is really funny is that none of these students ever worked with X-Acto knives and, uh, and spray mount and, and doing things with their hands and they love it. And we were doing mock-ups of uh, labels, redesigning a label, going to a grocery store, finding a bottle, bringing it back and redesigning it. Okay, so now what's really important to know is that these are not design students. These are uh, journalist students, they are um, media study, uh, film students, they've never designed or illustrated before. And this is a 12 week course. So I, sh I show them uh, Adobe Illustrator, Photoshop and InDesign, and I show them illustration techniques, I show them all sorts of stuff. And this is their solutions. And this is like mind blowing. And 
they have to present their brand. The little name on each one is their last name. So that's the logo they design. So they've done all these marvelous, marvelous uh, uh, designs. They're not design students, all right? They're writers, they're filmmakers, but really kind of cool, uh, very inventive. Um, this is a second class, some other things. Yeah, very nice, very nice. Okay, and some more stuff. We'll get through this, we're almost done. Um, I always draw, I always doodle on airplanes. Not recently though, I'm grounded like everyone else. But there's that, some little drawings that I do. And they're fast. Um, this was for a project. All these drawings, I just kind of flow for themes and ideas. Um, and I just do hundreds of these over a day or two. Um, and interestingly enough, this project, when I was drawing all of this, all these drawings were rejected. So there you go. I mean, no one's perfect. And the solution was very different than that. Um, they wanted two figures. All right, so I won't just draw two figures. I will do like 50 to 100 figures, doing all sorts of things, and I'll maybe pair them up and have fun with those. So it's all about exploring all the time, you know? This is a metal sculpture going into a hotel in Vancouver. So picking paint chips and colors, uh, installing it, um, and how it looks in real life compared to on paper, and how colors that you choose are different than how they end up. Someone gave me a chair. Here, paint the chair. Okay, it was a commission. So I painted it white, I brought it back in, and I started to paint all these different blobs and colors. No plan, just started to paint away. And I think it's fun. I think everyone needs to do this. Experiment on things they never worked on before. Going around a spindle, going up in, in terms of uh, color, in terms of wrapping, painting around things. Never done that, and man, it's very, very hard. It's very difficult to do learn new skills, okay? So that's, that's kind of fun. Um, and it becomes very different than from what they gave me. Um, these are some uh, dresses I designed. Um, we're producing them this year. And very different based on some of my posters, very bright and what have you. Um, one day I started to paint these uh, little simple paintings, very graphic, black and white. I added color. Very, very interesting. Okay, added more colors. Yeah, that's kind of fun. And then on top of the colors, I cut out uh, photocopies and Xeroxes and blueprints. And, and then I started to paint and create these layers. And it just kind of went in a whole different direction I didn't really plan on. But this is a whole series of these uh, paintings. And there's my assistant. She is um, cleaning them up and we're putting resin on them, making them nice and shiny. Um, I had a uh, commission to do a mural on a building. This is the first design. It was rejected. They liked it, but they liked the other solution better. The other solution was again based on those paintings I did for myself. Okay, so I just introduced that to my client. And they go, Well, I love that. So we picked those old colors out and then we projected this on the wall. And I was painting this at night. Okay, and then it was summertime last year, getting a little colder in, in September, finalizing it. And then this mural, everyone now wants to stand in front and have their picture taken. It's a very bizarre thing. Um, so nobody's perfect. It's all about experimenting. It's all about pushing yourself, having fun, really enjoying yourself. Um, my students get stressed out. Anxiety is the word. And I always think this is a time for you to be playing. Okay. This is like, and I think myself, well, I'm, I'm playing as well. And you gotta have the play element that will feed your actual work, okay? You just can't work, 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 work over here. You gotta have this fun thing over here. And sometimes, especially with Instagram, uh, my clients watch me and they go, hey, I, I saw that thing that you, that's really cool. Can you do something for us like that? Well, yes, I can. I'd be more than happy to. So this is how it works. And this is what we all should do. Um, and, you know, make mistakes and fuck around and, and, just, and just enjoy yourself, okay? So there you go. Gracias. There. Okay, thank you very much, Andrew. Thank you very much. Thank you. Finally, you were very interesting. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey, wait a second, wait a second, hang on. This is my favorite thing. You gave me this in Lima. Remember this little toro? Yeah, I remember, Torito. Torito, and, we, and you told me I have to keep it really high up in my house. 
like high up or something. No, I know. You know I love you. You are a very good friend. Thank okay. you very much, Andrew. Okay. Gracias. No, muchísimas gracias a todos. Muchísimas gracias por haber permanecido aquí conectados esto a estas horas. Hemos pasado cuatro horas, wow, cuatro horas conectados con maravillosas experiencias como hay maravillosos eh, resultados de trabajos, dando esperanza, dando esto, fe de que sí vamos a salir adelante, que vamos a poder continuar con esta maravillosa profesión pero que depende de nosotros, depende de todos nosotros luchar por ello, acostumbrar a este nuevo mercado que va a estar ir afuera para recibirnos y con mucha innovación, con mucha creatividad, con mucho amor y sobre todo con profesionalismo. Gracias, Javín. Thank you very much, Andrew. Gracias, Gaby. Gracias, Yvette. Gracias, Leo. Gracias, Hernán. Eh, abrazos. Gracias, Fabián. Fabián. Estás ahí todavía. Bueno, Onish y Isidro por el cambio de horario ya tuvieron que retirarse, pero gracias también a todos, a todos ustedes que se conectaron estas cuatro horas. Y muy pronto, nos vemos en tres semanas en el nuevo DAC, que ya les traemos más sorpresas. No se olviden, DAC 3 en tres semanas. Chao a todos, muchísimas gracias por estar oh, aquí. Nos gracias. Vemos. Un abrazo. gracias. Gracias. Gracias a todos. Gracias, Rafa. Gracias a todos. Gracias.